patients who visit to the complementary and alternative medicine practitioners or the number is twice the time than the allopathy doctor. So in another angle, the patient is giving more importance for complementary and alternative system. And also you see the economical turnover. How many times patient has paid the consulting fees to the complementary system, self-medication, so many drugs the patient buys themselves by online. You see the economical turnover. So this is also another angle. Government is very much worried. And if those products are from India or China, we will be happy because we can actually get the foreign money transaction. So the so the it is not just uh, people's health. Even there are all other cultural and uh, promotion and job opportunities. So many things are there in that. So in the U.S., like we have Ministry of Health and Family Welfare, like that in the U.S. Department of Health and Human Services. Under that, they have National Institute of Health. That is the biggest one. They have started a national center for complementary and integrative health. So previously it was complementary and alternative medicine. Now they renamed it as a complementary and integrative health. It is not medicine health, so which means even something is not a drug, but just a yoga or exercise, something gives some benefit. We can accommodate that in the medical practice. That is the idea here. So it's an integrative health. So anything, any therapy, even any therapy, religious therapy also fine. If it is working, you have data, yes, they are open to accept. This is not only the US scenario in many countries. And there are many universities in US and Europe. They are very open for this integrative medicine and traditional medicine, like uh, University of Arizona. They have a separate uh, institute for integrative medicine. They are doing a lot of researches and courses and uh, giving higher studies for the allopathy doctors. Similarly, Duke University integrative medicine is uh, one of the gold standard model. They are doing a lot of research on that. Apart from that, there are academic consortium of integrative medicine health and academy of integrative health and medicine. They, they conduct uh, annual conferences to bring the and share the data from different medical system. You know, uh, even though a doctor completes these medicines, there is, there is only exam, American Board of Integrative Medicine. Those who cleared the exam only can prescribe even turmeric. Only those who cleared this exam can pr practice or prescribe yoga therapy. It is such a very strict there in the US. But in India, it's not like that. Our IU system is actually legally allowed to practice by the institutionally qualified doctors. So it's so easy to use any kind of traditional medicine among our population. The people who are looking traditional medicine also very high here. So the research can be done only in India. So in US, integrative medicine means using spices, turmeric, yoga. These are integrative medicine there. But in India, you, we can use anything. You can use even mercury-based drugs also. You can use in India. So the India should lead the, this integrative medicine than the China, then only our market will be explored more to the global level. It's not that uh, government institution, even there are many uh, specific areas like uh, cancer center, MD Anderson Cancer Center is the biggest cancer center. Even they have integrative medicine program. Similarly, there are, there are many infertility centers, autism centers, they have integrative medicine department. But you, you see in India, we have every system legally approved and you see how many cancer hospitals is having integrative medicine or how many autism hospital is having, giving importance for the complementary therapy, it's very less. So we are expecting everything, uh, them to you know approve them, then uh, we will move forward. It's a wrong way. So <clears throat> a globally accepted uh, integrative medicine or complementary medicines are, you can divide into two things, non-pharmacological and pharmacological. First, we'll see non-pharmacological means something, if it is not a drug, you are not giving anything orally, then it's a non-pharmacological therapy. For example, acupuncture, yeah, yoga therapy, osteopathy, massage therapy, chiropractic, it's a spine alignment, dietary practices. So even though it is given orally, it is diet. So there is a mild difference between diet and uh, diet and medicine. So which comes under diet, it is actually still non-pharmacological psychotherapy and spiritual therapy. You see that in, even in India, we practice uh, varmam. We practice a lot of our therapies, but they are in the art. So what I mean is art is, so a mother can cook any type of recipes. She can cook very nicely. Only she can cook. That is the art. If the daughter, even though she learned from the mother, she is not able to cook and give the same taste. So it is art. But when you convert 
the cooking into a culinary science. When it is converted into science, which means you can teach the art to anybody and anybody can learn and anybody can learn and reproduce the same, give the same effect. So this is what the science. So science, uh, immediately we should not think that uh, I'm talking about America, Europe, nothing. Even our own culture, we have science. So something if you standardize and it will be a science, that's all. So reproducibility, many people you can teach, there must be standard protocol, that's all. So we failed to convert Indian arts into a science. They are still in the arts level, but many, whichever, whichever system they converted their art into science, they are actually globally accepted. Standardized things are accepted. Second thing, come to the pharmacological, pharmacological therapies. Here, the standardized, again the standardized comes, herbal supplements like ginseng, evening primrose, turmeric, uh, uh, many brahmi, many herbals are approved. But here, again, based on lot of scientific research, they accepted this as a drug. So in India, we people use turmeric in the cooking. Every day, a spoon definitely we consume in the form of cooking. But in US, they consume turmeric in the form of tablet because they need scientific evidence. So that will uh, that actually improved the uh, export of turmeric from India, and they like Indian. Uh, what Indian medicine and they, turmeric is the one which gave a good respect to India. And among Indian herbals, turmeric is the one uh, was studied by so many scientists and the maximum number of research available for turmeric compared to all other herbs. That's the reason turmeric is studied A to Z very thoroughly and it, it is actually the best uh, Indian herb used in the foreign countries. Now, I want to point out here Turmeric is a Siddha herbal. Turmeric is the Ayurveda herbal. So whether Ayurveda system is approved by the world or integration, integrative world, no. So at any cost, they don't want to approve the whole medical system. So we should understand this difference. Siddha, Ayurveda, even yoga also, all the Indian yoga we cannot perform in outside countries, abroad countries, because it should be, as I told, it should be converted into science there must be a less dangerous, I will, we will discuss later what are the criteria we should fulfill to, for the global acceptance or for the integrative medicine. So the whole system is not approved, whichever individual herbal or individual therapies, okay, for example, pranayama, yes, it has scientific data, so it is it got approval, like that, and the traditional Chinese medicine, whatever. So the individual particular drug for a particular condition, or disease is accepted based on the scientific data. Now come to the turmeric, lot of, lots and lots of researches are there. Anyway, so I will not uh, go through that. Uh, you can read if you want, uh, turmeric in cancer, turmeric in every disease, almost all the diseases actually turmeric uh, has a better, a best uh, efficacy. And uh, now the medical field is actually shifted to the personalized medicine or precision medicine. It is actually nothing but the each person is unique. Each person is unique. Mother, father, daughter, son, all are different. Even though they are family, they are unique. So identifying and treating a patient based on the individual's genetic environment and lifestyle factor is actually the precision medicine. Now this, this is actually next generation medical practice. Now also it is started in many countries. So for that, the pharmacology role is very important. The pharmacogenomics is the department of pharmacology. It's a branch of pharmacology that study how the genes affect a person's response to a particular drug. So for example, methotrexate is a well-known drug for the cancer as well as for the psoriasis. But unfortunately, it's not effective in all the psoriasis. So what they have done a study, why these particular patients are not responding to the psoriasis, and then they found that these non-responders have three different single nucleated polymorphism. So there is a small genetic change. Genetic change doesn't mean they are genetically defect. They are normal like me and you, but still unseen, unnoticed, insignificant level of changes. That's what a polymorphism. That is not nothing going to, nothing to do with the genetic damage, nothing. But still, because of these minor changes in the gene, those patients actually, the drug is not effective. Now, this, is, this becomes the criteria before we start, Yes, we do this test and we will choose the medicine, whether this patient, we can give methotrexate or not, or we can do some other drug. Now the therapy 
is actually based on not like blood test and the lab, uh, not like normal routine hematology test. It's based on the genetic test. Now we have little more responsibility. Just integrative medicine is now shifted to the personalized integrative medicine is the actual goal. So with the genetic level, if you are able to prove your therapy, definitely that is going to hit the global market. Now, it's not the very difficult. Already many people have worked on that. I will give a few of the example. From the African, uh, African uh, country, few of the scientists, they worked the, on the pharmacogenomic level. So they have even proven that Philanthus amarus, it's actually Kilanelli, this is the plant. Uh, actually, that is used for, traditionally used for cancer, hepatitis, HIV, malaria, anti-cancer and all. They have found that they have the interaction with the genes which are actually producing, which are expressing the protein cytochrome and uh, many more genes. So this is the report. Now with that, we can actually plan. Philanthus MRS can be given for this patient, cannot be given for this patient, or whether it will interact with some other drug. Similarly, next to herb, Cassia alata, even we use for uh, fungal uh, in Siddha also, we use that. Wonderfully is the name. And uh, that is again has some action on some genetic uh, which uh, express some of the proteins. Similarly, this is the one Tridax procumbens, so like that. So now each country is trying to promote their traditional medicine based on scientifically. So this is this one we should understand. Now you again come to the medical pluralism. So not only Indian level, you see the global level. Lot of medical systems are available. All are telling we are 10,000 year old, we are 1 lakh year old. Yes, fine. We are very effective. Yes, fine. But show the evidence. That is what the world is asking. Show the evidence so that I can, as a patient, I can choose your system, or as a doctor, I can refer my patient to you. Or as a scientist, we can work for integrative medicine. So now, uh, since the most of the audience are Siddha, so I, I talk as a Siddha, otherwise it will fit for all IU system, all Indian traditional medicine. Now where Siddha is? So here we should understand the evidence-based medical practice. So what the evidence mean is, mean is, so this is the, you know, pyramid, triangle pyramid that will tell the level of evidence. So in that level of evidence, the basement is the animal experiment, in vitro, in vivo, docking studies, these are the basic elements. Okay, so these, these will carry five percentage, five marks out of 100 in the evidence. And the same drug, if you do case reporting, case series, and the expert opinion, editorial, based on some of the ex clinical experience, then this will carry 10 percentage, 10 marks out of 100. And if further research is done, case control studies on a particular drug, particular herb, it will carry 20 marks, 20%. It's actually evidence is doubling when we go higher. And cohort study, yes, really it will become 40 marks, 40% 40 evidence is there. Now, if you do a randomized control trial, yes, you have scored 80% mark. Now, in a university, you can see that 50% is the pass mark, right? So like that, if you consider 50% as the cutoff, you know, above randomized control trial is considered as the evidence. Okay, below are evidence, but they have lower level of evidence. They are not rejected. If these are good, good evidence is there, yes, we can go and we can do further science research and we can actually build the evidence top. So when randomized control trials are done on the same drug, in, uh, for example, now Corona, so Kabasura Kudinir is the drug in Tamil Nadu, in Kerala, Karnataka, Delhi. Now four places it is done. Now we will compile all the four and see that is what meta-analysis and systematic review. And then if it shows very good, yes, that is what evidence. So meta-analysis and systematic review carries 100 mark. So this is what evidence the world is asking to us. Based on this only, clinical guideline practices have been designed or the policy makers or our prime minister can recommend. Yes, you give this to the, throughout the country. So, or anything. So evidence mean, this is what the evidence, the scientific world is asking to you. So we should understand that. Uh, uh, so uh, we, we should move upwards to get the higher score.
now come to the our strength in indian traditional medicine siddha ayurveda we have lot of strengths right we have lot of strengths like we have more than 6000 palm manuscript medical manuscript so you know these are valuable signs today with the computer or with it, with the laptop Hello. Yeah. Ma'am, I think Sar's uh, connection was ended. Ah. Hello, James, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Ma'am, Sar connected. Yes, sir. okay sorry for the network issue so uh, we have a lot of strengths like more than 6000 palm manuscript which nobody can simply sit and work write that document that so such a precious thing uh, we should actually work uh, work on that so verbally something was told in those days when somebody documented in the palm manuscript that itself a decoding that itself a promotion of science now in the current scenario if you just tell which is written in sanskrit or in tamil hindu english it's not the science so currently it's a scientific world so we have to decode into the scientific terminology we have to just try to promote our science in the scientific uh, scientific form as i told we have lot of sense in india like yoga varmam or marma chikitsa massage external therapies we have thousands of oils not hundreds of thousands of oils for example if someone is having sinusitis we have just oil you apply on the scalp that is enough actually it will cure sinusitis if somebody is having burning mixturation you apply oil on the head joint pain you apply oil on the head so like that we have more than 10000s of oils external application they have the very good potential for the global you know reaching for the integrative care if you do the proper research diet therapy siddha spiritual therapy Uh, many spiritual siddha or uh, yoga spiritual therapy these are now we are using as a art art so i emphasize the, you should make a standardized uh, protocol so that it will be considered as a science then it will be accepted similarly come to the pharmacological therapies we have herbal animal derived drugs lot of marine products we are using in siddha also similarly marine and metal drugs we are using still mercury arsenic lot of minerals we are using but uh, we we fail to show that they are very safe so uh, uh, nobody actually accept nobody believe that if i say i am using mercury or arsenic as a medicine nobody believe but we are using still using vipumurai is actually semi synthetic preparation used in siddha kaikalpam is a rejuvenating or anti aging therapy actually yoga comes under kaikalpa therapy kaikalpa is many drug regimen as well as yoga therapy so yoga comes under kaikalpa in case of in the diagnosis also we are using nadi pariksha right pulse diagnosis and nakuri use oil using a oil in the urine diagnosis we do or any other things like uh, 96 principles are there with us yake panchabodam six taste dasanadi these are the thing these are the thing actually now it's a duty of the ayush doctors as well as the indian researchers to do something to decode these thing in an understandable scientific language so this is what we are saying to the scientific world we have everything now they are asking some question to us show the evidence they are asking you see the keeping this mind in in this pyramid they are asking some question 
any evidence based treatment protocol you have anything you have done made a protocol after meta analysis after a randomized control trial i am not going to tell the answer you have to think answer yourself how many meta analysis you have done for nilavembu kudinir or for a particular panchakarma therapy you only uh, think the answer how many siddha herbs or drugs are having randomized control trial evidence how many are available in the cochrane library yes this is what the policy makers and global community and scientific people look at just uh, facebook advertisement they will not uh, it's not considered as the evidence how many rct and siddha yogam varma massage or external therapy luckily we have lot of rct and uh, lot of evidences are available for the yoga therapy that is what taken the yoga to the global level we can see only yoga has evidence based practice with from india none of the other uh, other eye systems then how many rct on diet therapy nothing and how many classical siddha or ayurveda herbs have been studied in detail for their chemistry bioavailability pharmacology or toxicology why can't our government or our researchers work on selective high efficacy drugs okay within next three year let us finish two drugs take two drugs and finish study a to z that will go to the global market that will create the evidence why can't we do that in china they are doing and uh, do we have evidence for dengue chikungunya corona now you see evidence been you see in this pyramid where we are have we done any case control cohort rct meta analysis if we have done only animal study docking studies case control so you will get 10 percentage 10 mark out of 100 so we have, we have now we are not able to clear the we qualify qualification qualification right so it's uh, less than 50 percent so it's not evidence then do we have do you know the chemistry of or action toxicity profile profile of elevenbu kudinir or kabasura kudinir do we have evidence of this and uh, many time we say detoxification okay so what is the detoxification definition in traditionally okay it's correct whether the body is full of toxicity is it uh, what what is that it's not understandable so we should decode in the scientific language De- detoxification means whether you are trying to reduce the histamine level you are trying to reduce the elevated lymphocyte level what is this actually so we have not yet done any scientific work on that but these are fascinating words so that uh, when uh, we i say i am doing detoxification therapy yes of course i can attack the patient but another physician is not convinced our scientific world is not convinced with the detoxification so i should decode it we should decode it then what is bedi marandha in siddha and all they use bedi marandha what is what it is what it is doing whether it is regular resetting the gut microbiota or it is working on the feedback mechanism of the hormones or is it working on neuro hormonal uh, reflex or neuro hormonal feedback mechanism axis this all has to be decoded and the studies are not a diagnosis it is a very very non invasive diagnosis by ancient days by seeing the pulse itself the grandmothers can diagnose the pregnancy okay if that is the truth why it's not so popular why it's not practiced by current generation of ayush doctors and if it is true can we diagnose the uh, the abnormal pregnancies can we diagnose the fetal diseases so if something is coming out of from that it's actually good for human kind so please scientists or researchers should look into that studies on 96 tatum this is again very 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 important to establish our philosophies into science okay so when philosophy has a scientific data we call it as science until that it's a philosophy now in my knowledge dr c n devanayagam who is the who was the allopathy physician he actually tried to do or he actually initiated the integrative approach in siddha so during his period he actually the aids was arrived 1980s there that time no drugs no allopathy drugs was there many people were dying so he as allopathy doctor initiated that he called us the people and asked what do you treat what is there in your text about aids and you bring the drug and he has done a lot of clinical studies and finally he concluded rand therapy rasagandhi malugu amukara churnam nellika leekam these three combination of drugs actually uh, elevated the wbc level cd4 count and reduce the viral load those days 
1980s, he could do only this much investigation. And he even published that as a small paper. But unfortunately, after that, nobody continued the work. And even Indian researchers, nobody discovered anti-HIV drugs. Nobody discovered the anti-HIV agents from these drugs. Even now also, if some researchers are there in this team, you can try that. Definitely you will get. Even now also, we are using the same combination for the AIDS patient. So this is how that uh, initiation was not continued. So we are failing in the integration. Now, but some of the scientists in India, even many people are actually working, you know, Prakriti is the, the human people, human are divided into Vada, Pitta, Kapha, Prakriti, according to Ayurveda. Even Siddha also, same thing we call Yake, Yake or Dehi. So whether it is true or not, if it is true, the whole Ayurveda concept is true, right? That is the idea. People have worked great. All are great, great scientists. Not small, small people. Many Badma Bhushan awardees are here. Even Manipal team also here. That's what I know here. So they all worked and they found, yes, Vada gene is different. Pitta Kapha, they have some genetic spectrum. They have proven it. And this is the very big journal science report. And now slowly global acceptance is actually happening. Another team worked there. Same Vada Pitta Kapha Prakriti. Whether is there any difference in, for the in their microbiome, gut microbiota? Yes, they have proven, they have proven that you know Kapha people will have moji bacteria and these are right, and uh, Rhodococcus. This group of bacteria are more in the intestine, whereas in the Pitta people, you know, plano mycobacterium, and these are the group of the bacterial gut microflora are more in the Pitta people and in the Vada Prakriti some other group of family of mycobacteriums are more. This is what making the human, making the behavior, making the disease. So now these principles are very, very important. We have everything based on Vada Pitta Kapha. When Vada Pitta Kapha itself wrong, total system will be wrong. Now we have little bit evidence. And you can see that the scientists know we are Ayurvedic people. They are microbiology people. They are microbiology people. If you are allopathy doctors, so the contribution has to come from non-Aish people also. So it's not that all Aish people will do and we will enjoy. Even other people can contribute for the upliftment of Indian traditional medicine. And there is one more study from the Bangalore. They tried whether the Tridosha can be assessed in the kids, in the children. In that case, we can avoid a lot of what uh, freaking lot of invasive diagnosis. A lot of things we can avoid. Just by this principle only we can diagnose and prevent many diseases. We yes, ask Pitta people, Pitta Prakriti people are more prone for developing hypertension, liver disease, thyroid issues, like that so many concepts are there. So we can actually predict. Now, now we are, this is what I told, the pharmacogenomics. Okay, so what modern medicine is doing. Now we are actually started our journey, even pharmacogenomics of our IU system. Even another group of done, Amlaki Rasayana, is Amla, Nelikai Rasayanam, or even human, it's a randomized control trial, right? Randomized trial. Now it carried 80%. Randomized trial done 80%. Now it is globally accepted. Yes, arm like Rasana prevents DNA repair. Sorry, DNA damage and enhance the repair. So this is how we need, and here hardly see here again, Manipal team is involved, and a few of the Ayurvedic doctors are involved. Many are actually non Ayurvedic people. So uh, the contribution from non-Aish people or Indian scientists are very much invited. So now we will discuss actual problem. What is the problem? Uh, we have everything in uh, Ayush system, but what's the problem? Why it's not happening integration? I will discuss in few slides uh, the actual problem, so you will get some idea. So you see that drug A, drug B, both are allopathy drugs. And uh, if you combine, for example, paracetamol and ibuprofen, both are well-known drugs. A2 is it about both drugs are very known already. We are using both drugs. If you combine together and made a new tablet, single tablet, it is called a fixed dose combination. Okay, fixed dose combination is the combining of two drugs, which is already known everything. So more than even two, three also you can make. Now if we are giving for the oral contraceptive pills, this is given even TB patient, HIV patient, when more than one drug has to be taken. So that uh, combination should fulfill the following criteria. Favorable pharmacokinetic parameters should match. There must be a efficacy improvement. There must be a safety improvement. 
the simplification therapy should be happening. For example, previously three times a day, individually the tablet has to be taken after combining twice a day. Yes, there is a simplification of therapy. So like that, something, some improvement there, some advantages should be there. Similarly, cost effective. So if all these criteria, are at least 50% of the criteria are fulfilled, only then there is an advantage for fixed dose combination. You know, the Health Ministry of India, they have banned more than 300 such a combination released by a company. So known drug, well-studied drug, we know everything, but still you cannot just combine two drugs. There are criteria to uh, make a fixed dose combination. Come to the next aspect, polypharmacy. A patient is having diabetes, hypertension, eczema, asthma. So he will take four medications. Sometimes each disease, two, two medicines. So eight medicines he will consume. Now more than four medications when patient consumed individually, that we call it as a polypharmacy. All the drugs we know well, we studied well, we know in and out about all, but we don't know what will happen inside the body. So drug interaction, one thing will be compromised, side effect, a lot of things can happen. So that still science is actually struggling to learn, uh, to study that, they are still learning that. Now, in this scenario, if we go and talk integrative medicine, let us integrate, come on, we have 10,000 year old medicine integrate, is it possible? So we always look from our side. Okay, we, as we are in the comfort zone, we are familiar with our traditional medicine. We, are, we believe that my God is true. But you please come to other side and see and understand other side. And now you will know whether pushing my medicine or my God to others, is it right? Huh? So we need to work hard actually to push on the integrative medicine. So this is what uh, the trouble I told. So in a simpler way, I will make you explain. In India, when people uh, see the matching after, before marriage, they do horoscopy matching. So to see a horoscopy matching, the bride and groom both should have a horoscope first. Then it should be matched by the uh, Prohit or uh, astrologer or software, some computer software, right? And in South India, 10 out of 10, if you get, it's a very good matching. In North India, it, it is actually a little more deeper. They should get 36 points. So we believe, traditionally India, we believe that if we score this much matching, yes, it's a, he will be, he or she, they will be a good successful couple. But in real life, I don't know, I don't want to comment, comment on that. We ask, this is the belief system. Okay, real life is a science, that will be scientific, that is different. Same way, if you want to integrate either Siddha and Allopathy, so we should have a horoscopy of Siddha first. The horoscopy of allopathy is already ready. Horoscopy of paracetamol is there. Horoscopy of aspirin is there. But we don't have horoscopy of our system. We don't have horoscopy of Ayurveda medicine. Second thing, after matching, when we combine together, whether synergism, antagonism, what will happen? That again should be studied by the specialized department or pharmacologist or somebody. So here, before integration, Ayush system, their principles, chemistry, kinetics, dynamics, mechanism, toxicity, everything should be first. This is our horoscopy. First, we should write our horoscopy. Then we can think about the integration because when we integrate synergism, antagonism, drug interaction, a lot many aspects are there to look into that. So once we do that, definitely our IO system can reach the global. So you know that for that we have to, we are just uh, small, small studies are not sufficient. Because uh, four years ago, I was invited to China for one, uh, one, one of the, uh, uh, the alternative medicine conferences. There, that drug general of China, he presented very well and I got a lot of insight after that. So what they are doing, they are administering the kashaya orally, then they collect the blood, every half an hour, like the, uh, continuously they will collect, then they will see what compound got absorbed and what new metabolic has formed in the liver and they will take all the thing, then they patent that and their medicine. So they are actually the absorbed compound and the metabolic are the responsible for the mechanism of action, for the efficacy. And not only that, once they know that only they know and then they will try to do it in the in, in, in vitro or in vivo environment 
whether the same compound you can manufacture, you can synthesize in a large way in the in vitro cell line with using the liver enzyme, using our uh, di digestive enzyme, they try to do that. And uh, if they are successful, they isolate that and they make a drug. Now, they have a lot of drugs like that derived from the herbal and they are challenging after 50 years, only we will have new molecule, new compound because they only know how to manufacture, which enzyme, which help, everything they know. So they are actually working on, from the herbal, they are taking in different uh, dimension. So for that matter, I am telling even we also should work on metabolomics of the herbal. For example, this is the Ada Doda Vasiga. Very useful for the platelet count increasing. Very useful for the cough and asthma. Okay, it is having bromexin. That is the compound it is having. So it traditionally, Ayurveda let Siddha, we use for the cough. After bromexin is isolated by some scientist, some German scientist, and they made a converted into allopathy drug. Now you can see bromexin in the allopathy medical shops. After that, somebody studied bromexin in detail, and they found the bromexin when it goes to liver, the liver converts bromexin into ambroxa. So now it's a metabolite. This ambroxal is very much effective than bromoxin and it's a long acting. So now, because of the metabolomic idea, another new drug was discovered and it is now available as ambroxal, which is longer acting and more potent than bromoxin. And the taste is good, no side effects. So this is how we have to actually work on in-depth on metabolomic studies. We can get, uh, for the oil perspective, it's upliftment of our system. For other non oish researchers, you can do wonder. You can discover a lot of new thing in that. Okay, so that's what I want to say this with, with this example. And uh, what other things we have to do? Drug herbal interaction. This is very, very, very important. Pharmaceutics. So when we make a kashaya, lehya, something, you know, stability studies, till now no companies are doing. We don't know. In and out, we are using a lot of drugs. And when you store in a particular time, in Manipal, one of my friend has done extensive study on many unani drugs. And he identified loss of so many active compounds after three months, four months, five months. Every month he takes and do the analysis. So after six months, he found many compounds are lost and many new compounds are formed by the spontaneous uh, chemical changes. So now we don't know effect of that. So every month if you use the drug, one one effect it is going to give. So that standardization is actually lacking from us. We should work on that. And uh, another aspect is pharmacokinetic. So these are the uh, our horoscopy of our system, our herbal drugs we should create. So pharmacokinetic study. So absorption. When you give our herbal with an allopathy drug, what, what is happening? Whether absorption of the allopathy drug is affected or not. So even by just altering the industrial pH by your Siddha herb, or Ayurvedic herb, it can affect the absorption rate of allopathy drug. So motility, microbiota, intestinal secretion, a lot many things are there. So, so there, there is a possibility of interaction. Second thing, first pass metabolism and the liver metabolism. There are many enzymes involved in the liver. So many herbs, herbs in the Siddha Ayurveda can induce or inhibit these enzymes in the liver. So these enzymes are responsible for the allopathy drug metabolism. When you inhibit or induce or uh, when you alter the function of this enzyme, definitely allopathy drugs action will be varying. So they are worried about that. So it's a really, it's a very good worry. Well, we, we cannot blame them. It's a reasonable worry. We should answer them in a scientific way. You, you no need to worry or you have to worry. So that is what they are expecting. Similarly, distribution. Many uh, protein displacement, mostly the drugs will be you know dispersed in the blood in the free form and the protein bound form. Suppose if your herb is having the property to displace the drug from the protein. It's a reasonable, they are worried if it answer to them. Similarly, bioavailability, after combining herbal, what is the bioavailability of the allopathy drug? We have to answer. Similarly, the drug when it gets excreted in the urine, you know, there are a lot of transporters, even in the liver conjugation process, even in that case, endrohepatic circulation, a lot many things are there in that mechanism. So our herb can do something in this area and affect the 
uh, allopathy drug. Even for example, if you take, you know, if you take lemon juice, that is acidic, right? It will definitely change the urine pH. That is going to, if you consume lemon juice with uh, some uh, allopathy drug, which, which is also acidic, definitely it is going to change the uh, drug excretion rate. Okay, so these are the things concerned, yeah, raised by the uh, integrative medicine experts or scientific fold forum. Again, pharmacodynamic interaction. Okay, you, your herbal will be anti-diabetic herbal. Can I combine with the another allopathy anti-diabetic? When I take one anti-diabetic allopathy drug plus your herbal anti-diabetic, what will happen? Will it, both are going to show synergistically better effect or both will fight each other? We don't know. So sometimes additive effect, one plus one equal to two, you will get benefit nice. Sometimes you will get additive effect, synergistic effect. After combining two, one herb and one allopathy drug, you will get double, triple, you know, five times higher effect. So this is synergistic effect. So these are actually we have to answer them. Even short term effect. So using one week will have some effect. If you continue the combination after six months for a lifelong patient, you know, as a diabetic or someday, someday, the effect will change. So these are all the things, worries, we have to answer to them. Then only integration is possible. So you may imagine that what man, herbal never do interaction, herbal never show side effect. It's not like that. When you know, we are living with the herbal, we believe that herbal can act in the body and do the benefit. It means it is acting. So it will have uh, both sides, right? Coin has both sides, good and bad. So for it, some example, I will show you. You know, there are studies, the Monty Lucas is the allopathy drug used for the prevention of asthma, sinusitis, rhinitis and all. So what people think, citrus juice or orange juice is good for cough, good for cold, somebody get cold. Then they will think, yes, Monty Lucas for cold. Also, the orange juice is good for cold, citrus fruit. That is what our mind say. We were told that citrus fruits are good for cold. So they take combined together. What happened? the Monty Lucas bioavailability was reduced. Area under curve is reduced. So definitely the effect therapeutic failure will happen. So this has been proven. Now we should not take combine these two. It's a lesson after a research. Similarly in Chinese herb, Jingo biloba, when we combine Jingo biloba is good for ulcer, peptic ulcer, omeprazole is good for peptic ulcer, allopathy medicine. When we combine both, what happened again, they either the reduction in omeprazole availability, bioavailability, area under curve is reduced. So it's not ideal to combine. They are not, they are mismatching couples. So astrologically, we should not, you know, make them to be, to live together. That is what. Similarly, grapefruit. This is the grapefruit. When it is given with the lansoprazole, another uh, uh, anti ulcer drug, it increased the bioavailability. So here it is a very good, it is a very good combination. So now this drug will go for integrative. This is qualified for integrative approach. So this is how each and every drug we have to answer in each and every aspect. Then come to the garlic. We know garlic is very good, wonderful. Yes, no, no doubt garlic is good. But when it is good, how it is good, when you what, uh, what it is good, if you look at that, you will get a very shocking uh, news actually. So what happened? Garlic activates a lot of transporters, peak glycoprotein, multidrug resistant protein, so many proteins, uh, transporters, peptide transporter, it activates, which means, so usually, for example, I will explain peak glycoprotein. It is there even in the stomach, in the cancer cells, many cells it is there. So when somebody consumed, a cancer patient consumed cancer drug, so if peak glycoprotein is more active, that will push the drug outside the cell. So cancer cell cannot take the take up the cancer drug. So in that patient, drug resistant, multi-drug resistant will come. So here, uh, garlic enhance the pig like a protein activation. It means it will, it will not allow the drug to reach the target site. It will not allow the drug to enter into the cancer cell. Now, after seeing that, we are worried okay, cancer, uh, garlic is good, but now garlic is not good for a cancer patient who is taking anti-cancer treatment, anti-cancer drug. It is like a pathium, right? During this treatment, we have to keep pathium. Don't take garlic. Like that. This is the learning we are getting from this. Okay. So before the drug is doing its action, it is actually getting excreted from the body. 
so garlic is not suitable for integrative medicine with certain drugs not all with certain drugs whichever is, whichever drug undergoes this transport mechanism okay it may be suitable for something else something else drug. then come to another one that is pharmaco these are pharmacokinetic okay kinetic interaction pharmacodynamic interaction if you say warfarin is, is an anticoagulant drug we use as a blood thinning drug anticoagulant drug it will prevent the blood coagulation so it is used in many conditions we garlic ginger fenugreek very commonly used herbs we believe that even in the diet daily we use but unfortunately what will happen these herbs also have anticoagulant action they have also anti blood thinning property anticoagulant action so now after somebody consume this in the dietary and also consuming this drugs they will have serious adverse effect increased risk of bleeding they will get so if you know this concept if you promote this concept through scientifically the doctor will be very cautious either we have to tell the patient see you be patiyam you don't take this or you take this i will reduce the dose of warfarin okay i can reduce the dose so that you will not get the side effect so proper monitoring can be done that can be uh, that idea we will get only from this study similarly green tea green tea is having vitamin k vitamin k and warfarin both act opposite to each other both act opposite to each other so now warfarin effect is reduced okay the first one effect is increased so that side effect come here warfarin effect is reduced so strictly who are taking warfarin clinician should advise don't take green tea because it will nullify it will reduce the drug efficacy your disease will not get controlled so these are the data we have to give from even our indian herbs another pharmacokinetic interaction studies is actually this is the pepper we all know the pepper has piperin <clears throat> when the drug okay oxy resveratrol was given alone you see the dot 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 the line so it it was there in the blood for 16 hours when uh, uh, piperin is combined with the drug you know the drug stays in the body for 24 hours so it's a good thing so now the duration of action is prolonged bioavailability is prolonged so per day one tablet if you consume this fixed dose combination it will act for 24 hours such a nice combination so it got global acceptance from the scientific community now our pepper pepper or piperin gone to the fixed dose combination so that also they studied the bio enhancer so in the tb tb patient they studied even uh, and it shows you know after combining pepper or piperin with that uh, tb anti tb drug the sputum conversion is very much faster I mean which mean the cure is very faster and uh, the scot scp in liver damage previously happened now it is not happening and uh, other side effects urea creatinine uh, it is not happening okay and the number of patients reported the side effects was less so the combining the pepper just by combining a pepper with the allopathy drug it is so, so doing a lot of wonderful things now it is qualified for the integrative medicine or integrative approach so this is how we have to actually create evidence for each and every drug or practice so how it works because p glycoprotein is also there in the intestine in all the cells so now pepper actually inhibit this one it inhibits so it will enhance the drug absorption it so even cancer patient when they consume anti cancer drug or anti cancer siddha drug they can take more pepper so it will help the drug to reach the target site increase the bioavailability anyway unknowingly we are using three gadagu in all the majority of the uh, siddha and ayurveda herbs it is the principle behind that now it is good it is a good approved one similarly you know the bitter gourd bitter gourd itself having insulin like effect it also stimulates insulin secretion so after combining bitter gourd with a diabetic patient with insulin or other anti diabetic drugs you know it will reduce the dose required it will reduce the insulin injection frequency now this is the pharmacodynamic interaction it's a good interaction so now karila or bitter gourd is getting global acceptance now it is eligible for the integrative care 
come to the aloe vera we know it has both drug interaction kinetic as well as dynamic so aloe vera reduces the levels of cytochrome p450 group of uh, enzymes so pioglitazone is used for diabetes so when we combine aloe vera and pioglitazone anti diabetic allopathy drug it will help for the prolonged action of pioglitazone so previously per day three times patient took but after combining aloe vera two times it is frequency is reduced it is a very good one similarly aloe vera itself having own pharmacodynamic action that is enhancing adipose tissue insulin signaling pathway so these are the two thing it is beneficial accepted this is qualified for the integrative care in diabetes with the pioglitazone it is not with other anti diabetic or other thing in the many other condition it is not bad it is not good okay so here it is good similarly this one andrographis paniculata we know it's a nilavembu very popular herb india herb it is having inhibition property and cytochrome p450 so most of the anti diabetic drugs action is prolonged very good similarly it inhibits the glut for transporter glucose absorption the entry into the cell is inhibited it is another good good combination so now if a patient consume allopathy drug along with the kashaya nilavembu this one andrographis paniculata yes it will produce synergistic sometime additive or synergistic effect this is accepted because scientific data is there so now how to study the drug interaction there are many ways actually people are doing in vitro studies are available on the enzyme because drugs get you know uh, drugs are reacted in the intestine in the liver in the blood in the target organ so all the enzymes you can put the drug put the herbal and you can see what is what is happening whether your herb interact the with the in, inhibit or induce that enzyme or you can use the cell lines that will express these enzymes so that you will come to know you can see a lot of literature how to do you will get it and you can start working on that similarly in vivo studies are there you people can are doing with the rats and rabbits so rabbits is the quite good one because you can collect blood from the ear lobe a large quantity of blood you can collect for bioavailability studies even some many friends are doing it. you 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 can search many article in the uh, pubmed and all even clinical studies we can do patient diabetic patient is taking metformin now you want to give one herbal supplement whether it will inhibit the, or in, increase or decrease the action of metformin you can do both the kinetic and dynamic action you can have two groups and do that and any side effect like that so what i want to say is this all possible nothing is impossible here but only thing we should you know pinpointedly doing the appropriate thing instead of doing something else spending money in some other thing we should actually go in a right direction with the right team work it is possible so areas to be addressed by not only siddha ayush researchers you have to do proteomics metabolomics level studies the health risk and benefit after combining your herb with allopathy should be studied pharmacoeconomical how it will be cheaper after combining should be studied adverse drug re reaction should be monitored the interaction where it interacts how it interact should be studied based on that only we can think uh, further uh, clinical uh, practices then identifying synergistic regimen so uh, you can uh, for example in the dengue uh, sorry now covid so nilavembu kashayam is there one more kabasura kudini is there kudini is there amukra ashwagandha a lot of things are there you will study in this in different different area with uh, with the paracetamol without paracetamol and finally you will compare and you will choose the best one based on that we can form integrative treatment guideline if indian government or indian scientist form a guideline based on this evidence based guideline definitely global is going to accept our traditional systems there is no barrier and uh, there are a lot of scopes in siddha and ayush like yoga already really reached the higher level varmam still we can work on diet therapy uh, that vada pitta kapha based diet therapy still scientific proofs are lacking on that external therapies still these all we have to work especially in the area of palliative care palliative care we have a lot of roles to play so palliative care I mean when there is no treatment no curative treatment usually in the cancer and other thing end of the life period just a patient is sent to the home 
and uh, he, he the patient has to spend the last days or last months of life there patient will have small small problem bed sore uh, then constipation no digestion nausea vomiting pain lot of thing we have lot of scopes on that so rehabilitation care post surgical and all sports medicine lifestyle disorder diabetes hypertension lot of scopes are there similarly the cancer usually the intensive phase is given surgical uh, radiation and the chemotherapy it's for intensive phase and uh, we believe we have killed destroyed all the cancer cell and we send the patient to home but after 6 month one year patient come back so again we will start the treatment in between we are not giving anything so that is the chance for ayush people so for the maintenance phase you can do something that will prevent the metastasis immuno booster reducing side even reducing side effects of chemotherapy radiotherapy it's a very good opportunity we don't have much drugs in the allopathy to reduce the side effects of allopathy drugs so you, you can work on that similarly dermatology also chronic autoimmune condition geriatric therapy external worm oil massage women disease infertility these are areas actually gap is there so we i welcome you to fill in the child uh, autism cerebral palsy even hiv that is told uh, the initiation was done but not continued dengu also initiation was done not continued chikungunya initiation was done not continued but now it's a time covid 19 initiation is done and people are really doing good work and i hope they should understand what is evidence what is expected by the scientific community if they fulfill if they go on that right track definitely our indian herbs are going to be accepted we can give a very good solution to the world and uh, we are at the end of the slide now as a siddha researchers or siddha research institutions or scientific people who have facility with the team and with the funds they can work on uh, base level animal level laboratory studies docking studies they can work on the higher level of the evidences yes it needs lot of funds team and facility but other people like individual people what i can do for siddha definitely for siddha or ayurveda you can do a lot we are still case report case this is also you know carries 10 percentage weightage and this if you do multiple time it will build up the uh, it will take up the evidence to the higher level so we can publish your clinical experience as a case report and case series that is a separate session later sometime you will see how to write how to publish i have uh, conducted many such a sessions for students uh, ayush students many time so just you see the picture i am not going to tell anything so this is the day 1 day 2 day 3 day 4 it's very clear so it is here it is not there so it is accepted without any question yes you are shown evidence you see the second picture two lesions are there there here not there so very clear you are shown the evidence accepted right there is no more question it's a very good similarly you see here here the tag is there here not there ah, wonderful accepted this therapy is accepted very good similarly this is the psoriasis patient skin lesion here nothing it disappeared he became normal so these are the simple cases because it's a skin disease i can show the photo suppose if it's not a skin disease something else you should show that is to be convinced that should be you know there should be a believable report that is what i want to say that so here skin disease just a photograph is enough but for other diseases definitely you need to do something convincing strong evidence so that there is no more question to reject that evidence we need so this is the one okay now this is the last slide so as a allopathy doctors what we want from allopathy doctors the request they should come up with the gaps they should tell that see allopathy we don't have medicine for this condition or we are finding difficult there is a gap they should tell that so for example even in manipal kasurva medical college doctors when we discuss they still arthritis we don't have medicine psoriasis we have less medicine if we have better medicine yes that is good cancer we want to work on integrative basis they are open diabetic complication they are open diabetic ulcer they are open palliative care yes they are, they they agree that we have less uh, less things male fertility infertility they he the doctor himself agreed we don't have anything if you have it's a good bring the scientific data we will work we will refer to you so this is what it works so allopathic doctors should come up with the gaps so now ayush doctors or siddha doctors should try to fill the gap 
try to identify the solution from your system and you start you know start initiate the dialogue with the other field also and suppose you you have a lot of trouble herbal collection standardization medicine preparation lot of thing you have software so you can discuss with the other people you also should discuss your gap with the other people and other people like uh, chemistry pharmacy pharmacy pharmacology biotech and uh, some researchers you can actually create the horoscopy for our um, you can actually create the horoscopy for siddha health and all so you have lots of opportunity adhi you can mute that someone can mute that so you can have the lots of opportunity for the research so what i feel if some guide many people actually are there in this talk for who are working in many colleges so you can give short projects to your students to work on this you can club you can completely work uh, with a nearby ayurveda siddha physicians you yes yeah, they will tell the positive stories and you can you can take to further level if they tell one gap you can actually work on that be the software development there are a lot of things you have lots and lots of opportunities are there to do research even nobel prizes can be can be obtained by doing proper research from the ayur field so finally anybody any people all people can contribute in the integrative medicine we are it's not it cannot happen with a single person it is an ongoing process next 200 300 years this research has to happen will continue collective research collaborative research it's a never ending process so the contribution must be there from all the side as a teamwork so now we were here we who are doing more advertisement will be the hand will be higher so more system in india or in the global now we are slowly moved to the integrator now the, we are in the second stage slowly we started sharing we started discussing and the shaking hands so we are now in the transformation stage of the integrative first level so but in the future will be a personalized integrative medicine is the future goal so here it is you know how nicely arranged the things are arranged in a synchronizing fashion so here those hands or those drugs have the uh, have, have cleared the eligibility criteria have the data have the scientific background definitely will fit into this circle this is the personality personalized integrative circle and uh, other hands are not rejected if the same the scientific world is waiting still so other other hands still be in the out of the circle so it's uh, our uh, responsibility of indian people so be it ayush doctor non ayush doctor allopathy doctor it's our responsibility we as no american or no chinese people will come to india and work our work for our medicine so we have to try to push our medicine into the scientific forum for the integrative care so thank you so much for the opportunity now forum is open for the discussion thank you sir thank you very much for your tremendous and wonderful speech now this is a question and answer session here are some questions from our participants sir do we have any advanced technique for metabolic activity okay as i told uh, in allopathy the uh, metabolomics i think okay metabolomic studies we have to do actually so in the modern medicine bioavailability bioequivalence test uh, we are doing in the lab ah uh, okay thank you i think dr menaka's uh, uh, thing can be muted okay so bio availability test actually is the one important we should do so far none of the indian herbals underwent that test so in china what i learned is first they take for example if it's uh, some uh, ashwagandha for example ashwagandha kashaya what they are doing they are taking ashwagandha extract and our kashaya they are taking and they are doing the lcms gcms test and they subject that with all the digestive enzyme and the liver metabolizing enzyme individually and they will find they will find they will find yeah, any new chemicals are formed any new metabolites are formed then that also they will have a profit then they are giving the same kashaya to the human being and taking the blood and they are seeing whether all the compounds originally present phytochemistry present in the 
drug kashaya is actually reached the blood or something new have formed. So this is how they are doing. Even we also can think, but this required huge funds, huge lab setup, and uh, everything required. So here the benefit is already people are consuming these drugs. So we, we no need to find somebody you come and consume. Already thousands and crores of people are actually consuming. Even in the corona also, tabasara coordinate people are consuming. So what is what is big deal? Just collecting the chemistry, doing that, definitely we can actually do it. So government should think in that higher level, just not like a corona is becoming negative. I, I don't think. So effort we are putting, we will not get one more opportunity. So we can do a high-end research so that now itself, you know, we can push the IU system to the world wide. It is possible, definitely possible. Please unmute and speak, Dr. Shanti. I would like to invite Dr. Pillai Karasi, Medical Officer, Nanda Sutta Medical College, to providing a word of thanks. Good evening all. Now it is the time for vote of thanks. First of all, I thank the management and the educational institution for giving us a better platform for Buddha profession. I thank the institution chairman, Mr. V. Sanmugam sir, and secretary, Mr. S. Nandakuma Sadhguru sir, and Mr. S. Sirumiti sir, for their great support in organizing this wonderful webinar. I thank Chief Admin Officer Dr. Krishnamurthy sir. I also express my gratitude to Mr. Apollo G. sir, Admin Officer of Nanda Indian Medicine Campus for his kind support. I express my utmost, utmost gratitude to the resource person Dr. Arul Amurthy for his wonderful contribution towards the webinar. It is my pleasure in thanking our Principal Madam Dr. Manaka for this initiation. I wish to thank all the organizing committee who worked behind this webinar. Thanks for all the participants who actively took part in the webinar. Finally, I thank each and everyone who have contributed for the success of this program.